Congratulations on purchasing the Silver Wolf four-wheel drive motor kit for your electric golf cart. This video will walk you through the installation process, one step at a time, to ensure you are successful and will get you off-roading in no time. The following installation instructions for the Silver Wolf four-wheel drive motor kit will be based on the precedent model of club car with an aftermarket lift kit already installed. If your golf cart does not have a lift kit, you will need to install this first. Let's review the components included in the four-wheel drive kit, as well as the tools you will need. As this installation kit is specific to the precedent model of club car, each Silver Wolf kit provides the proper wiring harness and components you will need for your specific model. There may also be slight differences in the installation for other models. However, all the components are the same. Each Silver Wolf four-wheel drive motor kit includes the following components. Two electric timber motors, two motor controllers, one GCM, one metal controller box, one four-wheel drive switch, one Silver Wolf four-wheel drive main wiring harness, one Silver Wolf vehicle module harness for Curtis 1510, 1515, one battery power cable, one Silver Wolf four-wheel drive switch cutout template, one adapter bracket for driver's side, one adapter bracket for passenger side, two wire guard brackets, one for each adapter, eight M10 socket cap screws, four M10 socket cap screws, zip ties, and a small tube of Loctite adhesive. Once you have identified all the components, you will want to make sure you have all the tools required for the installation. These are the tools you will need. 3 8 inch and half inch ratchet. Ratchet extension, five inches or longer. Sockets up to three quarters inch. Metric sockets, 10 millimeter, 11 millimeter and 17 millimeter. Torx bits, T15, T20, T25, T30 and T40. Open end wrench up to 3 quarters inch. Open end wrench 10 millimeters, 11 millimeters, and 17 millimeters. 8 millimeter Allen key or socket. Torque wrench. Two flathead screwdrivers. Two small flathead screwdrivers. Phillips screwdriver. Cordless drill. Side cutters. Electrical tape. Duct or masking tape. Tape measure. Marker ruler or caliper, wheel chocks, grease gun, Loctite Red 271 or equivalent thread locker, X-Acto knife or electric rotary tool, tie rod separator or pickle fork, four jack stands, and a lift jack. Now that you are ready to go, it's time to prepare the cart. First, it is important to disconnect any electrical power source before installing the Silver Wolf four-wheel drive motor kit. Also, make sure the run tow switch is in the tow position. With the battery now disconnected or removed, it's time to mount the cart on four jack stands and remove the wheels. At the same time, it is helpful to also remove the vehicle seat, body panels, bumper, front dash, floorboard, and kick plate components for easy access during the installation. Let's take a moment to examine how all the components work together. This will give you a stronger understanding of what you are trying to accomplish before you start. Each electric motor will be attached to the provided adapter brackets and connected electrically to a controller. The motor controllers will sit inside the metal control box hidden inside the cart's dash. The main wiring harness then connects the two motor controllers to the GCM, which will be located in the battery compartment. The vehicle module harness splits the vehicle's OEM signal by connecting to the vehicle's original wiring harness, the vehicle's original rear controller, and now also to the Silver Wolf GCM. Power cables are then connected from the solenoid and battery to the BAC4000 motor controllers. Finally, the operator control switch also plugs into the main wiring harness. OK, let's get the electric motors installed. There are three connection points that will allow you to remove the spindle and hub from the lift kit. This includes the nut holding the rack and pinion 
and the top and bottom socket cap screws connecting the spindle to the A arm. There are a few internal dash cutouts that are required, and it is a good idea to take care of these before mounting the electric drive motors. In the center of the dash tray will be the location of the metal control box that houses the motor controls. In order to route the cables properly, two holes need to be drilled using a 1 and 3 quarter inch hole saw. Drill two holes in the center of the plastic console approximately 2 and a half inches apart. A second penetration is required at the base of the steering column. This will be where the operator switch wiring feeds through. Use a 3 quarter inch drill bit to make a hole at the back of the steering column. The last cutout is for the operator switch. The ideal location for this switch is just above the steering column, facing the driver. Included in the kit is a plastic template that will help you position where the hole should go and provide the proper size of opening required. Place the template on the plastic steering column enclosure in the location that best matches its profile. With a marker, outline the rectangle that gives you a hole size of 13 16 inch wide by 1 and 7 16 inches high. For best results, use an electric rotary tool to carefully cut out the hole. With all the cuts now made, let's return to the electric motors and their adapters. With the spindles and hubs removed, it's now time to fit the adapters to the suspension and steering. It's important to note that the Silverwolf four-wheel drive motor kit includes two distinct adapters designed specifically for the driver's side and passenger's side. The adapters are marked accordingly. For the driver's side, use the adapter marked DS-L. For the passenger side, use the adapter marked PS-R. We will be installing the passenger side adapter first. Take the adapter marked PS-R and use the 2.5 inch by 11 2 inch socket cap screws and two small spacers. Note that the spacers go between the tie rod and the adapter. Also, make sure to apply a drop of Loctite thread locker to each bolt before installing. Reinstall the nut onto the steering arm and tighten all three connections. The passenger side adapter bracket is now complete and the driver's side can be done using the same method with the bracket labeled DS-L. Installing the electric motors properly is the most critical part of successfully completing the Silverwolf four-wheel drive upgrade to your cart. There are a few things to pay attention to that will ensure that they are installed correctly the first time. Both motors are the same. There is no left or right motor, so you don't have to worry about putting the wrong motor on the wrong side. You will notice, however, that both motors have a mark near the bolt holes on the cart side of the motors. It is important to install the motors with this mark facing upwards. If the mark is not at the top of the motor when mounted, you will experience performance issues and the drives may not work. With this in mind, set the motor on a piece of foam in front of the adapter bracket. You can now gently insert the motor's cable through the adapter bracket hole and let it rest under the cart. Leave some slack in the cable to allow the motor to be lifted into place. Transfer the motor onto the floor jack. With the mark at the top of the motor, slowly raise the motor to align it with the adapter bracket and slide the motor into place. Check that the four bolt holes on the motor are in line with the adapter bracket holes. With the motor now in place, take careful note of the sequence of connecting the bolts. Do not jump ahead and install all the bolts and do not use thread locker at this time. First, install only one of the M10 by 25 mm socket cap screws into the front upper hole. Do not install the wire guard or use thread locker. Tighten in place with a ratchet but note, this bolt will be temporarily removed later. Next, take two more of the M10 by 25 mm socket cap screws and apply a bead of thread locker on both of them. Insert the two screws into the rear upper and rear lower holes of the adapter. Turning the steering wheel will provide better access to insert these bolts. At the front of the adapter, there is a separate wire guard that needs to be installed. To do this, Remove the front upper screw that was already inserted. Take this screw and the remaining fourth screw, 
Apply thread lock to both and install the wire guard to the front of the adapter. With all four bolts now in place holding the motor, tighten each of them using a torque wrench set to 55 foot pounds. The same procedure can now be performed for the other motor on the opposite side of the cart. The last step for the motors requires routing the power cables along the adapter bracket up to the dash. Take four zip ties and secure the cable. It is recommended to fasten a zip tie in the following locations. Behind the wire guard, against the adapter, and two ties attached to the cart's shock. Each electric motor requires a controller that monitors communications and power. These two controllers will be installed inside a metal container and mounted to the plastic dash console. To start, the controllers need to be fastened into the metal control box. The Silverwolf four-wheel drive motor kit includes the hardware needed to attach the controllers. In this version, there are eight M6 bolts, lock nuts, and rectangular washers. Place the two controllers on the metal plate and attach using the hardware. Don't worry, the controllers are the same. There is no driver's side or passenger side to be concerned about. Take the mounted controllers and metal plate and set it into the front dash of the cart. Align the box leaving about a quarter inch gap between the front edge of the box and the back of the golf ball holder. This will allow the top lid of the control box to open and close properly. Using a quarter inch drill bit, make two holes that align with the controller plate. There is a zip tie holder that needs to be attached to the first bolt that holds the control box in place. Fasten the control box to the dash. Now comes the job of routing the wire harnesses and power cables. You will want to start with the power cables. Begin with the red labeled power cables and locate the end with the larger 5 16th inch ring terminals. These ends will connect to the solenoid located in the battery compartment. Insert these terminals under the kick plate at the base of the seat leading to the battery compartment. You will need to open up the OEM control panel and run the cables between the batteries and into the OEM controller. The two red power cables are then connected to the positive post on the cart's existing solenoid. The two black power cables will also be routed into the battery compartment. When the battery is back in place, the black power cables will be connected directly to the negative post of the main battery. The opposite ends of all four power cables will now be run up from the floor under the dash and through the two cutout holes that were made earlier. You will notice the floor has grooves designed to accept wiring. You will need to fit all the cables into these grooves to maintain a smooth, flat floor when finished. A tip is to use duct tape to keep the cables in place. Once all the cables are installed, add zip ties to tidy up the wiring and avoid interfering with any moving parts. The main wiring harness also needs to run from the front to the back in the same way as the power cables. Inside the battery compartment, the Silver Wolf GCM is mounted to the front wall. Adhere the Velcro pads to the inside of the battery compartment and attach the GCM on the Velcro pads. Each Silver Wolf four-wheel drive motor kit includes a vehicle-specific harness. This cable connects to the vehicle's OEM controller and splits the signal so the four-wheel drive kit can communicate with the cart. Take the vehicle-specific harness and insert it between the cart's original controller and cable. The other end now plugs into the Silver Wolf GCM. There is also a black power cable that will need to be connected to the negative terminal of the battery when it is reinstalled. The cart's control panel can now be closed. Take the loose end of the Silver Wolf main wiring harness and plug it into the Silver Wolf GCM as well. The other end of the main wiring harness can now be fed up through the dash and into the motor controller box just like the power cables. All the cables are now at the motor controllers and can be connected. Both controllers will be wired exactly the same. The right controller does have a zip tie clip that ensures the communication wire stays snug. This is the sequence you will need to follow. Attach the black power cable to negative terminal. Attach the red power cable to positive terminal. Fix the green wire to the U terminal. Mount the yellow wire to the V terminal and the blue wire to the W terminal. Plug in the small communications wire from the electric motors. 
And finally, snap in the large connector from the main wiring harness. Ideally, the driver's side motor connects to the controller closest to the driver. This keeps the system better organized. When both motor controllers are connected in this manner, snug up the zip tie and you are ready for the next step. There is one last wiring function to finish, and that is the operator switch on the steering column. You will see a three-wire cable stemming out of the main wiring harness. Feed this cable into the previously drilled hole at the back of the steering column and out of the front hole cut using the rectangular template. Simply connect these three wires to the three terminals on the operator switch. Make sure to connect the three wires in the proper order. When connected, gently but firmly push the switch into the rectangular hole. It should snap into place with slight friction keeping it snug. All the components are now installed, and it's time to configure the Silverwolf app and test the installation. If you have not already reinstalled the battery, place it back into the cart and connect the terminals, including the Silverwolf black power cables. Power up your cart as you normally would. If you purchase the optional foam mount, this can be installed along the steering column. On your phone, download and open the Silverwolf app. In the main menu, select Bluetooth Connections. Select the Silverwolf GCM device that appears in the available vehicles list. Follow the prompts to move the cart's forward, neutral, and reverse switch into its various positions. After configuring these settings, the app may ask you for permission to update its software to the newest version. Select Yes to update. A quick warning will appear and the download will start when you are ready. Back in the main menu, select Vehicle Setup. This will configure the Silverwolf four-wheel drive motor kit to your specific cart, including custom wheel size, which is important for accurate speedometer measurement. Selecting battery configuration is also recommended. Select between lithium ion or lead acid. You are now connected and ready to test the Silverwolf four-wheel drive motor kit. With the cart still raised on the jack stands, select 4H on the 4x4 switch and press the accelerator. If the front wheels start turning, congratulations! You have successfully installed the Silverwolf 4x4 motor kit. With a successful test complete, you are ready to put your cart back together. Start with installing the metal lid on the controller box and then reinstalling all body panels, bumper, and any other components that were removed. Torque the wheels and lower the cart off the jack stands. You now have an extremely capable four-wheel drive vehicle that's ready for action. If you have any questions, please contact your Silverwolf dealer for assistance. On behalf of Silverwolf, thank you for purchasing the four-wheel drive motor kit. Now, get outside and have some fun.